Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. I trust you. Well, today I'm going to share with you how you can add color to boring skies in Photoshop and we're going to do this with the help of zoning. It's just like painting. Let's take a look at this. So let us say we have this image. The sky is okay, but it's not very colorful and we want to add color to it. So we zone it. Let's say for the bright areas, we have planned to paint something yellow in it. So that's what we do. We zone the bright areas in and then we paint yellows on it. All right, and then say for the midtones, we want a little bit of orange or reddish color to it. So we do that for the midtones. And then for the dark areas, just like with the other colors, you can pick whatever you want. You are the artist, my friend. Just go crazy with the brushes and the colors. All right, so for the dark areas, let's say we paint with this one. And then we will use several different techniques that we're gonna discuss in this video to apply these colors and more. I'm super excited to share these techniques with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, thank you so much for tuning into this video. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo, actually this side, if you want to go ahead and download it and follow along, you, my friend, already know what to do. You know the drill. Check the links in the description. So let's say in the bright areas, we want to paint in a little bit yellow. So first, let's create a yellow layer. And the great part about this is that we are creating adjustment layers and you can change colors anytime you want. You can change color to whatever you want. All right. So let's click on the adjustment layer icon right there. You like the highlighter? Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color right there. And now let's go ahead and choose yellow. Now keep in mind, we can change this later. So you can start with anything that you like. Hit OK for now. All right. And we want to limit it to the bright areas. So how do we do that? Blend if. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. And then we take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer. I'm going to repeat that again for you. We will take this yellow away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layer that lies under it. In this case, it is the background layer. So we're going to take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer. So we move the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. And that way we are taking that yellow away from the dark area so that it remains in the bright areas. So right now, as you can see, the transition between the areas that it exists and the area that it doesn't is very harsh, right? So how do you think we can soften this transition? If you already know, congratulations. If you don't, don't worry, we're gonna get there. So hold the Alt key, the Option key and click on that slider, break it apart. The further the distance between the two broken apart sliders, the smoother the transition there would be. There you go. Isn't that fantastic? So we're going to keep it this way and hit OK once you're satisfied with your transition. Now you can keep it as it is. It's up to you or change the blend mode to something like overlay or soft light. So in this case, I'm going to choose overlay. It's a more intense version of soft light or you can say that soft light is a less intense version of overlay. However you want to put it, let's choose overlay in this case. Now for the highlights and also the midtones, we want a little more reddish color, right? More warmer. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color again. And this time, let us choose something like orangish red, something like that. Hit OK. Keep in mind, you can change any of this anytime. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. And again, we want to take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer, not the existing layer. If we wanted to take it away from the dark areas of the existing layer, we would use this layer sliders. But in this case, the underlying layer is being considered. So we're going to play with these sliders. So there you go, something like that looks nice. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on it to break it apart. And you can break it apart as much as you like and hit OK. Now change the blend mode from normal to overlay and there you go. Instantly, this image goes berserk. Here's the before, here's the after, just by doing that. Now after doing all of these adjustments, you can always go back to these adjustment layers and try experimenting with different colors and see how they work. If you increase the saturation by taking it to the right, this my friend is the result. If you decrease the saturation, this is the result. If you decrease the brightness, this is the result. See how many combinations we can create. You can also play with the hue, make it greenish, bluish, that's all up to you, you know? play with this. So I'm going to make it slightly brighter and keep it this way. Hit OK. By the way, you can also take your time to play with the range. So double click, let's say on the right hand side of the layer, you can play with the blend if and control which areas you want to apply it and which areas you don't. So we can move it further, closer. That's all up to you. I'm going to leave it at that and hit OK. Now to add more drama on top of it, you can add a variety of adjustments like a curves adjustment layer. Now keep in mind, whatever you do in Photoshop, whatever effect you want to achieve, they are not just 10 steps written on a piece of concrete. No, you are the artist. Just start playing with the brush. Do whatever you like. If you see something, if you look at an image and you feel like, all right, this image is missing that ingredient, 
add that ingredient. There are no steps involved. All right, so click on the adjustment layer icon again. And this time, let us go ahead and choose curves. I feel that the sky needs to have more drama. The overall image actually needs more drama. So we're going to make the docks a little more darker. And just as you do that, have a look. This is interesting. There you go. And we will make the brights a little brighter. There you go. Add so much more drama. Now, in this case, I feel like we don't want the reds to get that involved in the bright areas. So we double click on the right hand side of the layer and we take it away from the bright areas. First of all, let's break the slider. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart. See, we have more details and less color. It kind of looks nice to me. It's up to you as to what you want to do. Also, the reds are too much, so you can always play with opacity. Opacity is your best friend. Humans go overboard, so let's go and decrease it to about 50%. Now it begins to look very natural. Before you and I move forward, you want to take a look at the before and after? Let us do it. So here is the before and here is the after. We have definitely come a long way. I feel like a little bit more opacity is justified here. So let's go for something like 70%. You can always adjust it. This is not written in stone. Now with the curves, don't you feel like definitely we're adding more drama, but we're losing a lot of details in these mountains and trees, right? So how do we get that back? There are a couple of ways. We can select the mask of the curves, take the brush, black as the foreground color, and then just start painting here. But that's not quite helping. Let's try another method. Why don't we make a copy of the background layer all right, and then first of all, let's convert it into a smart object so that whatever filter we apply, we can change this later. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. And then in this, in just this layer, we brighten this area. And how do we do that? With camera raw. So brightening shadows, let's name it. Let's go to filter and then camera raw filter. And all we want to do is just increase the shadows. Maybe let's also try increasing the blacks but by doing that, we lack a lot of contrast. So let's increase the contrast. There you go. Now we are getting somewhere. You can also play with temperature a little bit if you like. There you go. This is interesting. And then you can just keep on experimenting. For the sake of saving time, we're going to stop here and hit OK. Now we only wanted it in the mountain areas. So how do we get that? Mask. So hold the Alt key, the Option key and click on the Mask button to create a negative mask. Now let's take the brush white as the foreground color and then just simply paint on these areas. That's all. That's also adding that very nice brightness to the sky, which I like. Now, after you have done that, change the foreground color to black. By the way, you can always press D to set the foreground and the background color to black and white. So if it's some other color, some random color right here, press D, that will set it to defaults and then you can press X to toggle between the foreground and the background color. Pretty neat, isn't it? So now let's change it to black and erase the extras. You might as well want to decrease the flow to about 10% and add some highlights and shadows. What if we were creating a sun-like feel here? Why not make another copy? Let me show you what I mean. Let's decrease the flow even further to 5% and let's create a feel as if light is coming from the center. There you go. And now we make another copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And in this copy, first of all, let's delete the mask, create another mask by holding the Alt key, the Option key, and clicking on the mask button right there. And then why don't we just dab, create a sun of our own. So set the foreground color to white, make sure flow and opacity are at 100. And then you can just dab in the middle where you want the sun. There you go. Interesting, isn't it? So it's like sun is behind and then you can adjust it to your liking. First of all, unlink this layer. Press Ctrl or Command T and now you can adjust this to your liking. Let's stretch it a little bit, keep it this way, bring it a little down, something like that. And just by adding those two layers, it makes a hell lot of difference. So here's the before, here's the after. Look at it, fantastic. Now I do feel like it needs a little more contrast. So I'm gonna go open the smart filters of the sled, double click on the camera filter, and then maybe let's try adding a little bit of clarity in there and try decreasing the blacks. Probably that will help. Hit OK. Yeah, it's a little better. So here's the before. It was a little too faded. Here's the after. Now it's better. Now if you want a little more interest on the top, let's create another curves adjustment layer just above these layers, just before adding all of those colors. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Make the brights brighter just like that. You can even create a point in the middle and take it up. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now let's take the brush white as the foreground color, and then just dab on the top of the trees, something like this, to add more dimension here. Now I know it looks odd, don't worry. 
you're gonna take the help of Blendev to make it more natural. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take it away from the dark areas by holding the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way to the right. Hit OK, there you go. Here's the before, here's the after. You don't have to have it at 100%, just a little bit of it. 50% I think is fine. There you go, my friend. Now for the dark areas as well, you can also have a shade. But before we do, I feel that this scene needs to have a little more drama. So how do we add more drama? First of all, let's merge everything. So press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. Make sure the topmost layer is selected so that the merged layer is created above it. So press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. It creates a stamp visible layer. Then go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, hit OK. So that whatever filter we apply, we can change that later. All right, so let's go to Filter. Camera Raw Filter. It's one of the greatest tools in Photoshop. So right here, you can do a variety of things. You can increase the contrast a little bit more. This adds some boost there. You can also try increasing the texture for the clouds. You can also increase the clarity. This adds more drama. And you can also try dehaze and see what that does. There we go, just a little boost, I love it. Now there are some areas where I don't appreciate it. Don't worry about those areas. Then you can also play with vibrance and saturation and see how they work. Hit OK. Now this is of course too much. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask button. There you go. Take the brush, white as the foreground color, and then just paint on areas where you want it. That's all. For example, I don't want it in this area, so I'm going to erase it from there. And then with lower flow, like 20%, we're going to paint it gradually on areas that we want. 10% would be fine as well. Now, as you and I have understood from our experience and adventures in Photoshop, that as humans, we always go overboard. And that is why it is always essential that we decrease the opacity of the entire thing. But before we do, let's just also apply some color to the dark areas. So let's create a solid color adjustment layer. Let's go with bluish color. All right, let's choose a dark blue color. Hit OK. Try changing the blend mode to something like overlay or soft light. Let's go with soft light. We don't want that intense. And we only want it in the shadow areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the bright areas. Just like this. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on it to break it apart. Break it all the way apart. There you go. Something like this is nice. Hit OK. Now we don't want that much. Just a little bit of it. Something like, I would say 28. All right, now select all of it, select the topmost layer, hold the shift key, select the bottommost adjustment layer that you used for adjusting the image, press Ctrl or Command G. All right, let's name it Color Sky or Dramatic Sky, whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name it Drama. Opacity is always your best friend in Photoshop. Simply decrease it and keep just a little bit of it. 66 does the trick for us. Also, there's one more thing you can do. So let's say you don't want it that much in the dark areas and you want to apply it gradually. Let's say in a way that you want to apply it more in the bright areas and less in the dark areas. Here's how to do it. So let's first of all increase the opacity to 100 and then let's go to channels. Now inside of channels, if you want to create a mask based on the brightness values, here's how to do it. Let's say the brighter areas would be selected more and the darker areas would be selected less. For it, hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of RGB. All right. Now, create a mask with that active selection. There you go. Now it is applied according to the brightness levels. The brighter the area, the more it is applied. The darker the area, the less it is applied. And this, my friend, is the mask. And now all you need to do is to fade the mask. So go to the mask properties. So I'm going to double click on it. Or you can simply make sure that properties is checked inside a window. Make sure properties is checked, select the mask and simply decrease the density. That's all. So you can play with the density, see how much you want. In my opinion, this is a little more natural way of doing it. So I'm going to keep it at 36. And on top of that, if you want, you can decrease the overall opacity further. I feel like 100 is fine. Now, if you feel like it is getting too colorful and the colors are all over the place and you want to add something, an ingredient of togetherness to it that brings all of the elements together, here's how to do it. You can do whatever you want at the end. This is called a global effect. You can add a lot. You can add a curves adjustment layer. You can make it slightly monochromatic. That's all up to you. In this case, I feel like we can use the Luminar plugin to add some more mood to it. We don't have to use a lot of AI, just some LUTs and some moods. Here's how to do it. So we're going to create a stamp visible layer again. So Control, Alt, Shift and E. There we go. Let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Luminar works with smart objects, so that's fantastic. Let's go to Filter, 
Skylum Software Luminar Neo. AI is the older version. So in here, I've added mood as my favorites. So let's open that and you can choose whatever LUT you want. But along with that LUT, what's great is besides the amount, you can also control the contrast and the saturation of it. So let's say we want something like, I'm going to scroll down, Rose as one of my favorites. Let's choose that. And just as soon as you choose that, it brings all of the elements together. So I'm going to have the amount to this one. You can control the contrast. You can have more or less. So I'm going to have a little less contrast. And then on top of that, what we can do, let's increase the amount a little more. We can enhance it a little bit. So let's go to Enhance AI. And just slightly, Accent AI will do the trick. There you go. If you want to enhance the sky, you can do that too. Just little settings here and there. Does the trick. Hit Apply. Take a look. See, it brought everything together. And again, you don't have to have the opacity at 100. Let's decrease it. Slowly and gradually increase it. I'm going to keep it at about 60. Boom. And by the way, it doesn't have to be Luminar. You can use any plugin you like, any LUT you like, or you can just apply Camera Raw at the end. It's all up to you. And if you do want to check out Luminar, I used to have an exclusive link to the trial version. It was not available publicly. I think it was in a previous video I made. If it is still active, I'll let you know in the description. So check for it. If it's there, it's there. Now, after doing all of this, let us take a look at the before and after. So here, my friend, is the before and here is the after. Now, that is drastic. And even after that, you can group all of it on top of it. So group of groups, press Ctrl or Command G, and then you can decrease the overall opacity of the entire thing. If you don't want the entire thing, you can have it at something like 62 and have a subtle effect. So that's all for this lesson. Let us do a quick little recap. So how do we color the sky? With the help of zoning. We create solid color adjustment layers of different colors. You can choose whatever color you want. And then you can use Blend If to apply those colors to particular areas. Now you can use Blend Modes like Overlay and Soft Light to actually apply those colors. To add more drama, you can use a Curves Adjustment Layer. If some areas are very dark, you can take the help of Camera Raw Filter. And you can also add Camera Raw Filter to add more drama to it. Add a bright area to it. You, my friend, are the artist, whatever you feel like, you splash it in onto your canvas because your canvas is uniquely yours. Now, after that, at the end, humans go overboard. So you might want to make a group of everything. And then you can also use luminosity masks to apply it only in certain areas more and let's say in dark areas less and decrease the overall opacity. And on top of that, apply a global effect to bring everything together. It can be a simple LUT, it can be a plugin like Luminar, or it can be the camera raw filter, whatever you like. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too a new day is waiting for us we got lots of fun stuff to do